A visitor had written, I saw this barefoot young child running around with Aboriginal children. I think she belongs to the household. A hundred and sixty years ago, this was the home of a wealthy little girl. The daughter of a pastoralist who ran wild with the local Indigenous kids. She just, I think, probably led a fairly unmonitored life because her mother was known to be a drunkard and seemed to have a lot of other interests in life, mostly other men. And her father hated doing what he was doing, and that was running a property, so he, I think, avoided being around too much. Letitia Leake was seven when her father died. She eventually inherited his fortune and her uncle's, $40 million money that helped her countrymen recover from the Great War. Researchers Carol Gerbich and John Berger have been unearthing the heiress's story since 2016. Their semi-retirement has been busy, writing a book about Letitia. Hundreds of old letters, documents and photographs tell her extraordinary story. Letitia's father, Edward Leake, a squatter, was the first pastoralist to settle in Glencoe, near Mount Gambier, in 1844. He built this wall shed and a fortune. Despite her wealth, old photographs and letters suggest Letitia was at home with the local Bowendick children. She seemed to be concerned about the Aborigines and about other Aboriginal children. A visitor had written, I saw this barefoot young child running around with Aboriginal children. I think she belongs to the household. After the death of her father, Letitia's younger uncle became her guardian. He shuffled her mother and younger brother, who Edward said wasn't his, off the property and sent Letitia to boarding school in Melbourne. Then her uncle died and he'd adopted Letitia as a child and so he left his property to her. So now she's about a $40 million heiress. Pursued by men for her money, Letitia chose Charles Billiard, a bankrupt lawyer from a prominent family. He started having a look at her uncle's will, which was then just going through probate, and realised that there'd been some mismanagement of Letitia's fortune, that some of the money from Glencoe Station that should have gone into her account had gone into her uncle's account. And so it looked as though she was owed quite a lot of money. And so he started a court case. Her relatives fought back. They tried to prove Letitia's father, Edward, had been a bigamist, that he'd been involved in the disappearance of his wife's first husband, that her mother was a loose woman and that Edward was not really her father. Unfortunately, there wasn't enough evidence that could be taken to court, and so the matter was settled out of court. Letitia and her husband and a couple of children caught the boat the next day and left Australia for good. In 1896, they settled on a 100 hectare estate near Harefield, not far from London. When war broke out, Letitia and Charles's two sons signed up to fight, and Harefield Park became a hospital for wounded Anzacs. When the wounded started coming in from Gallipoli, at one moment there were 700 there, not 100 or 150, and that went up to 1,000 very quickly. And over the years of the war, 50,000 Australian soldiers went through that hospital. The billiard leaks are really anonymous. They are extremely wealthy people with properties across the globe. And what they do with them in a philanthropic sort of way is not for personal gain. They don't ask the government for recognition. They don't get any recognition for what they did, um, but they did it anyway. Complete with imported Australian animals, Harefield was the last stop for Australian soldiers before returning home. Many of them are suffering from what can be devastating wounds, so missing a leg, missing an eye, or something that they have to cope with. So there's a great deal of effort put into helping these young men uh, recuperate from their wounds and also give them plenty to do so they're not spent sitting around thinking about what's happened and wondering what's going to happen to them. Letitia and her daughter ran the canteen. Charles was a hospital board member and organised activities and entertainment, even royal visits. 
The recovering soldiers built strong relationships with villagers whose own sons and brothers were serving. So there's a lot of people coming by just to chat to the boys or bring them something as individuals who they make friends with. They like to take them out in motor cars and give them days out and trips, invite them to their homes. And in the process of doing this, young men meet young women and there are a lot of marriages. Those who didn't make it home to Australia had heartfelt farewells. In Harefield, when someone died, they were taken from the hospital and in a procession for a full military honours funeral at the local churchyard at St Mary's. There was a plot of ground that was dedicated to servicemen, particularly Anzacs, and that holds about 120 graves today. The locals at Harefield still care for that plot a great deal and it's a beautiful place. Harefield is one of three places in Britain that commemorates Anzac Day and local children learn about their legacy. After the war, Charles and Letitia Billiard League sold the park to the British government to use as a sanatorium for tuberculosis patients. Now a National Health Service hospital, it's renowned for its cardiology department and for performing the world's first heart and lung transplant. As for Letitia, she died not long after the war in 1923 and is buried with her family and the Anzac soldiers in Harefield. Letitia and her family visited Australia, but there's no record of her returning to Glencoe. Only New South Wales where her brother was and where she actually supported her brother and her brother's children, sent them all to private schools um, and looked after the widow when her brother died. So she was, I think, a good woman, a caring woman. With a story worth preserving.